If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, hikers and campers, what is your creepiest, scariest, eerie paranormal experience you've encountered deep in the woods? Was camping alone at a nearby lake in my late teens. I basically bushwhacked to a remote part of the woods just off the shoreline of the lake. I grew up hiking and camping wherever I could get to, so I was used to the noises and calls animals will make in the woods at night. Sometime after I fell asleep, long enough for the small fire to die to embers, I woke up with this immediate awareness that I was not alone. I couldn't hear much over the bug noise of summer, but then I heard voices off behind me. I slowly threw as much dirt and rock onto what was left of the fire and waited. It sounded like someone whispering, or talking low. I strained my ears, but the harder I listened the more everything began to meld together. At one point it sounded like they were to my left, then minutes later, directly to my right. And once it sounded like the voices were tuning in and out like a radio, kinda quiet, then suddenly louder. I laid there motionless for hours. I fell asleep for a few hours after the sun was starting to come up. When I woke again, I packed up and crept back out of those woods. Just did not feel right. Haven't felt it since, thankfully. I was camping with a friend at a campground just outside Portland, so well-traveled, fairly urban, lots of RVS around. It was raining and we were both in my tent dozing off. We heard, I kid you not, a loud animal scream, very close by. I'm an ecologist and know all the typical campground animal noises and this was not something I could identify at all. It sounded like it came from something pretty big, but it wasn't a coyote or a raccoon or anything, my closet guess is maybe a cougar, but I wouldn't expect them so close to people in an urban campground, and the sound was not right. My friend heard it too and we just waited in silence. A few minutes later, another one screamed back from across the lake. The next morning when we got up, every dog in the campsite was totally terrified, we saw a few that had been leashed outside and were still hiding under RVS. To this day, I maintain it was either Bigfoot or a massive cougar. One night I was sleeping in my tent up in the Canadian Shield. I heard crunching on the rocks near to me. It got closer and closer. Then things started brushing against my tent. I was terrified, but also stupidly curious. So I poked my head out of the tent to see what was going on and guess what I saw. Wolves. A whole pack of wolves, sniffing around the tent. They barely even reacted to me poking my head out. Just stared at me and then kept sniffing. I closed the tent back up and hid in my sleeping bag hoping they didn't decide to rip into my tent and eat me. Was camping up in the Boundary Waters in Minnesota as a kid and in the early morning hours, we're awakened by this tremendous slap and a huge splash in the middle of the lake. First thought is someone either threw a rock or fired a gun, which would suck when you're that far out in the wilderness. My little nine-year-old self almost chat my pants as another massive smack rippled across the lake. Turns out it was a fucking beaver which, for those who aren't aware, smack the shit out of the water with those massive tails of theirs before they dive under. It's incredibly loud and absolutely obliterates the quiet of the night around it. Also, we heard a rustling in our camp a few nights later and it turned out to be a very bold duck. I was probably 16 or 17 and bombing home from a party on my ski to late one night. It was a full moon, cloudless night and the moon illuminated the hills and trees of the northern prairie landscape. I darted between forests along a trail I knew well. Ahead was the river, but my trail crossed it in a place that was reliably frozen solid, especially in cold Februarys like this one. As I approached the river my trail was a narrow path woven between poplar and black spruce. All of a sudden, a massive moose, silver in the moonlight, stepped into the trail, blocking my path completely. I hit the brake, nearly flying over the handlebars, but I was on a Bravo so I wouldn't have ever had enough speed to fly off haha, -ha, and skidded to a stop just before the river. Shaking, I looked up and into the bush and saw absolutely no evidence of a moose. I figured maybe I was tired and maybe shouldn't have had a couple beers earlier on. I was still a bit out of sorts as I sat back down and started slowly towards the river. Except as soon as I saw the river, I saw that it was open. Had I not stopped, I would have hit the open water going too fast to stop in time, on a sled too small and slow to skip across it. I would have fell into the river, all alone at minus 20. If I'd made it out, nobody would have been there to help me. I certainly would have died. I have no explanation for that moose. I'm pretty skeptical, I don't believe in ghosts. But that night, that moose saved my life. And if that is what ghosts are like, we'll, I'm not afraid of ghosts. My mom and her boyfriend were just telling me the story. This past summer, they were out late one night fishing on a Navajo reservation in Arizona, I can't remember the site, but Maricopa County. They had my dog Sammy with them and she is very in tune with her surroundings and will let you know when something is around and will protect if needed. 
but she suddenly just had this low growl and staring into the trees. When mom's BF got up to investigate, Sammy refused to go, even started whimpering, extremely unusual for her. They could see something, roughly the shape of a man but with horns on its head one way, and three more or various kinds in another direction. They didn't do anything, they made no noise, just stared and watched. She initially thought they were the furries that come around and fuck with people sometimes until she tried to capture them on film. Tried to record a video of them, you could see their silhouette in the dark but when she pointed a flashlight on them, you couldn't see them at all. It was like they vanished in the light. Then would reappear a couple feet away when she turned the light back off. I'd pass it off as my mom and her BF seeing shit, but that doesn't explain why my very alert dog was so bothered. So yeah, my mother is now a very firm believe in skinwalkers. Firstly, I do not believe in ghosts, the paranormal or anything of the sort. Here's my story. I was camping at a lake. Took an afternoon hike around the area with my nephew. I go off trail quite often and did so towards the lake. I came across a crevice in the rocks and went into the area by taking off my backpack and squeezing through. The area was ringed entirely with boulders and the crevice was the only way in. There were rocks slash logs arranged around the fire pit in the middle. There was a structure, a primitive outhouse. Had to have been built in place and hand carried in, piece by piece. Inside the outhouse was a bucket with a child's cartoony potty on top, like you'd use for potty training. Sticks were hung all over, tied into figures all of the Blair Witch. Stones stacked in little piles. The area was a good 20 yards off trail. It had this overwhelming sense of dread. My nephew, 13, at the time, was also weirdly terrified and felt uneasy. We left and immediately heard voices. Remote area, there had been no other people around. Instead of heading back towards the voices and the trail we cut back towards the lake and decided to head back to camp along the lake instead of the trail. As soon as we did we heard footsteps through the brush and spooked and ran to the lake's edge. There were more stacked stones and stick people so we bolted again. Eventually, we decided we'd scared ourselves and left. When we came across a large rock outcropping we cut back into the forest. As soon as we get about 5 feet into the forest the unsettling feeling returns. By now we're very far off trail and there were no people on the shore. Very distinctly, I hear a small child laughing in the woods. My nephew, not easily scared, grabbed my arm and started to run. I hear more voices as we sprinted to the shore. As soon as we hit the lake edge and clear the forest the hairs on the back of my neck went down and it felt instantly warmer. We didn't go back into the woods and kept hearing footsteps following us. When we got near camp we were both sweating and terrified and sprinted the last few hundred feet because we had to go through the forest. There was nobody around. We both heard it. We refused to go back to the area to prove there were sticks bound together or the hidden clearing with the rocks and figures in the woods. The rest of the people laughed but we heard the laughter and footsteps and never saw anyone. I don't believe in anything paranormal, but someone or something followed us through the woods that day and I never saw another soul the whole way back or while on that trail. When my sister suggested that campground again I refused. It's not paranormal. I was raised by my grandparents and every summer we would take a camping trip. One summer we went to a new campsite. A few days into the trip I woke up while my grandma was passing me through the tent opening to my grandpa. I started to say something but he put his hand over my mouth and SSH'd me. I watched my grandma walk up the hill to the truck as my grandpa followed behind her carrying me. My grandma got in the truck and he handed me to her then closed the door really slowly and took off hauling ass around the truck, jumped in the driver's seat slammed his door and drove off really fast. He drove around for a while and I ended up falling asleep in truck. When my grandma woke me up it was daylight and we were at a sheriff's station. We went in and I sat within my grandma in these chairs while my grandpa went and talked to someone, then a lady cop came and sat with me while my grandma went back. I had no idea what was going on. We were there for a while. When we left a couple cops followed us back to the campsite. When we got there our whole campsite was totally trashed. I had to sit in the truck while they messed around the campsite. I think they took some pictures and then they started putting everything in trash bags. I remember throwing a fit because they were putting my The Little Mermaid sleeping bag and pillow in the trash bag, it was shortly after that movie came out, and my grandpa yelled at me to get back in the truck. It was the only time he ever raised his voice at me. We had to cut the trip short and go home, we ended up stopping at a little carnival on the way home. When I was a teenager I asked my grandma about it and she told me what happened. My grandpa had gotten up to find somewhere to pee and heard some people walking up the trail towards our campsite. They were talking about how the campsite was up the trail and it was just two old people and a little kid there. 
He figured they didn't have good intentions and came back and quietly woke my grandma, got me, and we got the hell out of there. He didn't know where the sheriff's station was so we parked at a gas station until it opened and he asked the attendant for directions. Never figured out who did it or how many people there were, but they trashed the campsite. Someone shit in the ice chest and used the sleeping bags to wipe their ass. Pissed all over the bedding. They tried to set the tent on fire but it didn't take. It also looked like someone jacked off on my pillow. My grandma explained that they'd just discovered the jizz looking substance all over my pillow when I started throwing a fit for it, and my grandpa was stressed about that and that's why he snapped and screamed at me the way he did. I still get chills thinking about what they'd plan to do if we were there. Stayed at a cabin in the North Georgia mountains when me and my wife were still dating. Her name is used in a scary movie where people wearing creepy masks knock at the door and ask if so and so is home, so trying to be macho I naturally say that casually earlier in the night to freak her out, you know so she'll snuggle up and get closer to me at night. So it's about 2 am and we're up talking and messing around, when the door swings open. My wife scared from my earlier comment swears up and down she locked the door earlier, she has no crap OCD so I'm sure she did. Me trying to act casual say maybe she didn't know Biggie, about 2 minutes later we hear footsteps and laughter on the side of the cabin, followed immediately by a knock on the door. Had to clear the immediate area outside using a pistol I had brought with us, I acted cool but would have shit my pants and probably shot myself if a fucking mouse ran by, luckily nothing was there and it was our last night. Still freaks me out to this day. Used to run a children's away camp. My boss looked for all the world like a viking, 2 meters tall, 300 pounds slash 150 kilos, glorious beard. This is the one thing he ever told me that scared him. We had just finished with the nightly campfire ceremony, you know, songs and s'mores and shit. At the time, I was raking the coals and pouring water on it to douse the fire. My boss was watching the little kiddos and our counselors walk back to their cabins. On the other side of the clearing, maybe 300 meters slash 1000 away, he kept seeing this shadow pop in and out of the woods like someone checking to see if the coast was clear. Just as he was about to walk over and see who it was, he sees it burst out of the woods, running full tilt towards our center cabin. To this day, he says that he didn't see feet. It ran up the long slope, with no loss in momentum. Just as it was going to cross in front of one of the lit windows of the cabin, it vanished in a dark cloud. A few years later, when he felt comfortable sharing what happened with me, we had one of our teenaged counselors, who ran for his school, test it out. He didn't come close to matching its stride. To this day, we don't know what that was. I've seen, heard and smelled Sasquatch before. The first time I saw one, I was just walking around in the woods near my house, when I saw a roughly 6 feet 6 inches brown haired creature fording a river. It was bipedal, with its arms swinging as it walked, bears front legs don't swing when they walk on their hind legs. I've seen a roughly 6 black haired creature running through the same woods. A friend has seen these humanoids crouching behind trees and observing us. We tried to figure out how tall one of them was, based on my height. It was crouching, but still somewhere around 5 feet 8 inches-ish, so based on my height, 5 feet 10 inches, we determined it was roughly 10 feet tall. To describe what I've smelled, I don't even know where to begin. I've smelled them twice before, and the second time was the worst thing I've ever smelled. It was like feces had been baked in the sun for hours in a garbage dump. The smell was so overpowering I nearly threw up. The only time I ever heard a vocalization was when a tree broke about halfway up during a windstorm. It snapped and fell over, and I heard a faint howl shortly afterwards. Additionally, in the time since I've been venturing out there, roughly 10 months with over 200 visits, I've had rocks thrown at me three times in the past. Once, a rock was thrown at me from the other side of the aforementioned river. Another time was in one of the hotspots for Sasquatch. Lastly, the third was thrown at me when I was just standing with my friend. The third time, I was nearly struck by it. Unfortunately, despite all of this, I don't have any real evidence. Wolves. Maybe. I was a boy scout and we were having our annual winter camp out. We put up our tents and went to bed pretty early since the sun set at about 5 pm. It must have been about 2 am when I woke up to the sound of snow crunching around my tent. I'm a light sleeper and there were maybe three or four of us in our tent and nobody else woke up. It was easily hovering around 0 degrees Fahrenheit all night and the crunching got closer and closer until I could hear sniffing from an animal. The crunching grew louder and louder until I could tell there were two animals sniffing around our tent. I was sleeping right next to the door and I had my sleeping bag pulled up around my face and could barely breathe because I was so scared. I didn't want to make a sound so I just sat there with my heart pounding. The sniffs grew louder and I could hear the tent door begin to unzip. 
The animal had pushed its nose against the door zipper and forced both zippers to separate away from each other, opening the door wide enough for the creatures to enter the tent. My head was fully covered by my bag and beanie and I was certain I was about to die. Both animals immediately plopped down on my feet and I thought for sure they were wolves. After what seemed like an eternity, I mustered up the courage to peek out the top of my bag to see what was going on. The two wolves were actually labs and I went from panic to pure bliss. I'm a huge dog lover and was so happy to have doggos in the tent with me. I slept great the rest of the night and found out that the dogs had escaped their crates from a neighboring camp and went out in search of warmth. They were quickly reunited with their owners and that was the end of it. I got lost in the Quiver River State Park in Missouri overnight wearing nothing but a swimsuit. It was summer and we'd been tubing in the river all day drinking a bit. My friend and I didn't realize it was getting late. We got lost on our way back to the car and once the sun had set there was literally no light. The trees blocked out the moon and the stars. No light, no shadows. Like an empty vacuum. No sounds, it's like everything turned off after the sun went down. You had to feel your way through the forest. Might as well have gone blind. The alcohol had skewed my internal compass but the fear of being stuck in the forest sobered me up and I felt like I had to at least try to find my way back. When the sun sets, the forest drops about 20 degrees or so in temperature. So not only could we not see, but we were freezing. At one point we got separated. I fell in the brush, broke my flip-flops and sprained my ankle so I could barely move anywhere. Honestly I started questioning if I was going to make it out of those woods. We eventually found each other by following each other's voices and decided it would be best to just stay put until the sun rises. She fell asleep. I don't know how because all I could think was that something was going to eat me. Out of the pitch black about 100 yards from us stood three iridescent blue figures. They looked like people but really really skinny. Their light was very dim, like a really low frequency UV light. It was the first sign of light or shadow I'd seen since the sun had set. At first I just thought I was losing my mind, but I closed my eyes and opened them and they were still there. They moved around a little bit like they were communicating with each other or something but never got any closer to me. They just stood there watching me. The only way to describe them was that their movements were very wispy. In that forest I was more terrified than I'd ever been in my life, but when I saw them I suddenly felt safe. I feel like I should have been afraid of whatever it was, but I was so traumatized from everything that they brought me a strange kind of peace. It felt like they were looking out for me and that everything was going to be okay. I'll never forget that. When morning came someone had sent out a search party and eventually we were found, over a mile away from my car. Somehow we'd been turned in the opposite direction of my car and were so deep in the brush it took a 15 minute hike, on a sprained ankle, and 20 minutes on a four wheeler just to reach civilization. There was an EMT and our freaked out parents waiting for us. This was in 2011. Still no clue what it was that I saw. Was told a girl died in the park only a couple weeks before under the same circumstances. I'm glad we made it out alive. My wife and I were camping in the Daniel Boone National Forest in KY for a week. We were just boondocking, meaning we were the only ones around for maybe a mile, just camping where we parked. We had a beautiful site right next to a lake all by ourselves. Anyhow, one night at around 2 am I'm just watching the campfire die, contemplating life. My wife is already in the tent sleeping. All of a sudden, I start to hear sticks and leaves cracking in the woods right next to us on both sides. I call out and no one answers. I see eyes in the dark, three sets. Three big ass dogs, one looked like a damn Saint Bernard, the other two looked like some type of boxer, come from both sides and stay in the outlying parts of our camp, kinda circling. My wife wakes up, and I tell her to quickly and quietly hand my bag out to me. She does, and I grab my pistol out and hold it at low ready. I yelled at the dogs, and the stared for maybe two minutes before wandering off. Freak the hell out of me. Camping at Big Tree State Park in California. My wife and I and our five kids and four dogs decided to let our youngest boys, eight, sleep in their own tent like their older siblings. Wife and I are awoken by our chihuahuas growling but our labs were snoozing. Couldn't get the dogs to settle. Then all of a sudden I hear sniffing and breathing outside the tent wall and the, the tent well being pushed in. Dogs go nuts. Noise goes away. We scramble out of the tent and get our two eight-year-olds and the teenagers and all climb back in the family tent. I laid awake all night long. Next morning the ranger came by our campsite and said a mama bear and cubs were roaming the park the night before. He kept right outside our tent. True story here, and still to this date unexplainable. Years ago while I was a senior in high school my friends and I decided we would go camping in the woods behind his house. The woods behind his house were attached to state land and there wasn't anything in them for quite a long ways. 
The three of us got a big tent from Walmart, filled our backups up with camping supplies, food and a ton of weed and beer. We hiked for a good 10 miles probably until we found a clearing in some trees near a field. The spot was awesome, so we set up camp and started smoking and drinking. Night came and we had an awesome fire going, food cooking and we were smoking a blunt each and bullshitting. We decided to go back into the tent and hotbox it. We were in there for probably a good 15 minutes when all of a sudden our massive fire just went straight out. I, curious, went outside to check and was freaked out. This fire was out. I mean fucking straight out, no embers burning. I shook it off and just thought I was stoned out of mind or something. Friends and I relit the fire with new wood and kindling and went back in the tent. Fire was bright and I could see it was burning tall. There was no wind. About 5 minutes and boom, the fire is out again. This time I hear some crunching in the leaves. My friend grabs my arm and whispers he has a pocket knife and is ready to run out there. I told him to shut the fuck up and wait and listen. Crunching slowly faded off into the woods. Eventually we all went out and noticed no fire and no burning embers, but no water was poured on it or anything. It was not windy, and it was about 60f outside. I lit fires many times in my life while camping and never experienced this. I relit it one last time and went back in the camp, this time I kept the door flap open and the screen closed to watch it. It was burning tall as hell, looked like it would last a while. All of a sudden it went out right in front of us. Completely out. It was as if it just poofed into nothing. We all heard crunching in the woods again like something was walking away from our tent, stopping and then walking away more. This crunching occurred for a good 15 minutes. Safe to say we closed the tent up, all went back to back to have a full view with a single pocket knife at our defense. I was scared out of my mind. We stayed awake until sunlight, none of us slept. We made it back and still bullshit about it from time to time. Super weird. Went camping with my old scout group in Nova Scotia. We were spending the night on some crown land at a lake we always visited, reason is that it has some decent campsites and we knew the different trails around the area quite well. Anyways the second night we put up our lean-tos when it suddenly started snowing heavily. This was in January and the day before was quite mild and we basically had no snow on the ground at all. After everything outside turns to a winter wonderland me and another leader stayed up chatting talking about the weather and what our plans were for the next day, when suddenly off into the darkness we see what appears to be a flashlight sweeping back and forth towards our lean-tos. One of the kids saw this too and became freaked out about a stranger in the woods. I got out of my warm sleeping bag and got dressed to investigate. The snow was falling quietly and obscured my vision using my headlamp. I started to become concerned when I swear I arrived at the spot where the light came from, no footprints or sign of anyone out there when I saw it again. I heard a tree branch crack to my right and saw more light sweeping back and forth in a weird fashion. I noped the fuck back to my lean-to and pretended that everything was okay, I stayed up almost all night keeping watch in case some creep was around the group. Me and the other leader still both maintain we saw the light. It was a very odd experience. About two to three years ago I was doing some pest control on a farm not too far from where I lived at the time. It was around 2 am watching a pile of blended corn and honey through my night sight IR scope I'd placed to lure rats out. Then out of nothing the air temperature around me dropped seriously low and became very damp and humid, a very weird feeling considering it was a warm summer night and I was in just a light camo jacket, I looked up and blinked a bit to adjust my eyes to the dark after staring at the illuminated screen and can only explain what I saw as very thick, dense cloud of smoke with a circumference of a meter or so. It was only a few meters away from me and just seemed to sit there. I literally froze solid on the spot and couldn't move, considering I walk around farmland and wood blocks fairly often I'm not really afraid of much as far as sounds and things in the dark go, but I also don't believe in the paranormal or stuff like that so seeing this smoky blob literally stumped me. It eventually seemed to evaporate away and I composed myself and packed my things up and went home. Still have no idea what that was and haven't seen anything like it since was solo backpacking to the ancestral Yapachi Pueblo in the Bandelier National Wilderness near Los Alamos through a lesser travel back route, turning it into a longer two-day, one-night hike. It had been a warm New Mexico spring day, and as I set up my tent near the Yapachi Pueblo ruins, probably 400 to 500 yards away, it was probably in the low 60s. Forecast called for temps to dip into the high 40s. I hadn't seen anyone all day, and the night was cool and peaceful. Fast forward to the wee hours of the morning. I wake up shivering hard, in my 10 degree north face goose down bag, in my three season tent, i.e., warm gear. My camelback inside my backpack, inside my tent, is frozen. For you backpackers out there, you know this is really, really weird. 
Temps shouldn't get that low on a spring night in an occupied two-man tent. Lastly, it was dead quiet. Like, nothing. No sound. Nothing. Me moving a toe in my sleeping bag sounded loud. It was the weirdest, quietest, coldest feeling I've ever experienced. I felt tense, and I didn't want to move for fear of making more noise. I hike with a weapon handgun, and not that it would have done me any good, but it made me feel a little better to hold it in my hand. I laid there shivering, trying not to move or make noise, for what felt like an eternity. I suppose I eventually drifted back to sleep because I woke up around 5 a.m. in the pre-dawn twilight and everything was back to normal. Birds were chirping, wind was rustling bushes, etc. My camelback was still frozen though. I got up and packed up my stuff, and then hiked through the Indian ruins, trying not to step on pottery fragments and scared to touch anything lest I upset whatever weird Indian spirits must have visited me overnight. I asked the ranger back at the park station if they had experienced any abnormally low temps that night, and he said that it was a normal night with temps in the 40s. When I was little I lived with my grandparents, small farm, nice woods behind them. I played in those woods from the time I was a toddler. Someone had let out their big old meat rabbits, or maybe they escaped, and they'd come to the property, being a toddler they stood about as tall as me. This was the 90s, and one of the movies I watched was Alice in Wonderland. I remember thinking, if Alice followed the big white rabbit into the woods, so should I. These were friendly big rabbits, I think I have pictures somewhere, they would sit and cuddle and get scratched while I fed them horse grain. Off I went following them. I was hesitant, but I loved those rabbits so I kept following. We got to the edge of the sort of cleared woods I was allowed to play in near our swampy ponds. I trailblazed into the woods mostly walking through the shallow stream because I was too little to be able to stomp down bushes. The rabbits would stop and turn around to watch me follow. We finally got to a clearing, in the middle of heavily wooded forest. There was a tree that had been struck by lightning, and the way it fell and the bark that stayed made it look like a throne. I would stay down there and play while the rabbits played with me or just did rabbit stuff. I'd bring my toys down. I'd just hang out with them. Well, this went on for three or so years until I was six or seven, I'm assuming the rabbits passed away my grandpa said one got hit by a car. Without the rabbits I didn't go down in the woods anymore. And I honestly didn't think about it until someone reminded me about them years later when I was 12. I decided I would go back down for old times sake and just go into the woods to sit and think. It took me forever to get down there since my paths had overgrown, but sure enough my stump throne was there, and some old toy cars were at the base still. I was stoked to find that and sat down in my old spot. I can't remember why, but I decided it was time to go back up. I brought my little hot wheels to put them with the rest of my collection and was spinning the wheels as I walked back up and out of the woods. When I got inside I was getting yelled at for disappearing. I thought I was just down there for 20 to 25 minutes, but when I looked out the window it was pitch black out, I had gone down in the early afternoon. When I was little I could always hear when I was being called, yelling for me, whistling, shooting over the hill, banging the cast iron together, etc. Apparently my dad and grandparents had been calling and searching for me everywhere for hours, they called all the neighbors to start a search party, my mom pulled up as they were yelling at me trying to figure out where I was and she was in tears and pretty much collapsed hugging and squeezing me to death. I don't know what happened? It was like I was in a bubble that sound, time, or lack of. Light couldn't penetrate. Probably about 10 years ago was camping with my family, I was younger at the time, maybe 13, in northern Michigan. We had gone down to the lake to do some night swimming. If you haven't done it you should, the sky is stunning. So we are on floats watching the stars when out of nowhere an orange fireball swept across the sky and stopped near the horizon so that we could just see it over the trees. This orange orb of light just hovered there for about 3 minutes and then shot back across the lake in a different direction than it had come. Never saw anything that could stop and change direction that moved that quickly. The crazy thing was that I wasn't able to find any stories on it the next day anywhere. I just got back from a backpacking trip in Pennsylvania, backpacked on the Appalachian Trail with a group. My parents picked me up and we made it a road trip. We wanted to see New York City and all the touristy stuff there, but we were trailing a pop-up trailer so we weren't going to risk parking or pay for a hotel so my dad found a camping site nearby. We got in late, around 1am, it's very dark, there's no one on site to show us our camping spot. We got our number from a bulletin board posted at the entrance and drove around on runways in the dark for about 40 minutes we had no idea where we were going and it was impossible to find our way in total darkness. We finally found two cop cars on the runway. My dad drove by them and rolled down his window. No one was in there. The two cop cars were facing each other, about 20 yards apart, their lights on and flashing each other. But no one was there. 
we finally find our spot and it's right in front of an abandoned hangar with lights on it next to an old ambulance car. We figure, hey, it's abandoned and start unloading. Then a guy comes out with a shotgun. The ambulance isn't abandoned, it's a remodeled RV. We chat for a bit, tell him this place is creepy as hell and he's like, yeah, it is, that's why I have a shotgun. Anyway, we get unloaded and I'm dead tired so I immediately fall asleep. When I wake up in the morning, my mom asks us if we heard noises in the night. I slept like a rock but apparently, my mom couldn't sleep all night cause she kept hearing a clanging noise from the hangar. Later on, I saw a forklift and a compact excavator come out of the hangar. I figured that's the noise my mom heard in the night. I tell my parents and my dad talks to our neighbor. Our neighbor had been staying at Floyd Bennett Field for a few days and said he never heard any noise or machinery come from the hangar cause the hangar is abandoned. He left later that day. That night, I left my window unzipped to get some air in. I have no idea if I was sleeping or this actually happened but in the middle of the night, I saw a glowing white light flicker on and off in the hangar. I honestly think I was half dreaming but nonetheless, it was creepy. Next day, my mom is brushing her teeth early in the morning outside when she claims she saw a man in a white hazmat suit come out of the hangar with a briefcase. My mom freaks out and finally my dad drops some info on us. Floyd Bennett Field has a long history but one creepy tidbit is this. During the 21st century, Floyd Bennett Field has been used for dealing with the aftermath of disasters. After the crash of American Airlines Flight 587 into Bell Harbor in the nearby Rockaway Peninsula on November 12, 2001, one of Bennett Field's hangars was used as a makeshift morgue for the crash victims. The noises at night, the lights in the hangar, the machinery and a guy coming out in a hazmat suit plus it previously being a morgue was enough to get us out of there. We were supposed to stay three nights and ended up spending only two nights there. Even my dad, who didn't believe what my mom and I were saying, didn't want to stay there. While we stayed there, we never saw anyone around or even in our section except our neighbor in a remodeled ambulance. We saw a few tents here and there but not actual campers, even at night. During the day, people would fly drones and such on the runway but left after a few hours. All in all, it was creepy. Summer of 2016. 16 years young hiking with my father and family friend, Steve. We are in the Colorado Uncompagre wilderness hiking up Wetterhorn Peak, a full day trip, roughly 15 miles round trip I'm jamming to my downloaded playlist during most of the time on my hikes while we are at the ridgeline about to make the final ascent to the peak. The terrain starts to get too technical for my dad, and he didn't want me going on without him, so we waited overlooking the thief valley that the mountain turns into. I'm listening to my music and I think I hear something, but disregard it as part of a track that just went unnoticed to that point. A moment passes and I hear the noise again, it sounds like someone hollering, but I can't really tell for sure, I mean if it was someone shouting I figured that my dad would hear. I decided to take off my headphones just to be safe and another moment passed. Help me. I'm stuck. I hear it clear as day. I tell my dad that I hear someone shouting for help and we shout into the mouth of the valley, trying to communicate with this guy shouting for help who we couldn't even see. I am able to get him to hear me and we start shouting to each other across the mountain range. I yell out and ask if he was alright, his response confused me. Call 911 I'm fine I'm stuck. So we assumed that it was a hiker who had taken the wrong path and needed help getting back. I started to ascend the peak to intercept Steve as he descended to ask if he had any cell signal at the top. Once I reached him I filled him in on the situation and found that there was no service at the peak. As frantically walking back to my dad with my phone out, in one square foot of land I stop and my phone switches from no signal to showing zero bars, minimal signal. I'm able to get into contact with 911 and fill them in on the situation. I then went to Steve and my dad who had seemed to spot the hiker on the lower face of the mountain. My dad told me to start trekking to the car and once he and Steve reached the hiker, he would give me a signal whether or not to drive the truck into town for help. The hiker was a young man in his mid-twenties. All he had on him was a t-shirt and shorts, no day pack or water to my knowledge. He had fallen the day before and took quite the tumble. He had been slipping in and out of consciousness for the past 24 hours, which he had thought were two to three days. He had both ankles broken, broken arm, and a broken neck. When the hiker was yelling I'm fine he was actually saying I'm blind. Due to a large gash above his eyes causing both of them to be swollen shut. Luckily two helicopters arrived within an hour or two. One was a standard medivan chopper and another one was a military helicopter which was equipped with more versatile landing gear. Even luckier was that the only two hikers behind us that day was a couple, an EMT and a firefighter. My dad, 
Steve, and the couple worked together to properly position the hiker and communicate with the medevac chopper. They were able to fly him to Durango to receive emergency treatment. The hiker, Dave, ended up making a full recovery and summiting the mountain the next year. A lot of luck went into this that it may be one of the only experiences that makes me question if there is a higher power. I was hiking in the back country of Great Smoky Mountain National Park with some friends last month. We started a fire around 5 pm and let it burn while just hanging out around it until 10 or so. Before going back to our tents we all peed on the fire and then poured water on it. It was completely out. It then started to rain as we went to bed. I woke up 4 hours later, around 2 am, to see shadows moving on the side of my tent. I get up, zip open the window and see our fire absolutely roaring. I woke up my friend who I was sharing a tent with, we called to our friend in his tent about 10 yards away. No reply. We called out again asking if anyone is there. No reply. Finally my friend in the other tent wakes up and asks what's going on from his tent. We all meet outside by the fire, still going strong, and look around for a sign of anyone being here. Nothing. The ground around the campfire is wet, and the logs we were sitting on were soaked as well. But the fire is still going. We poured more water on it and went to bed. No fucking clue how it started on its own again. My boyfriend, dog, and I camped out along the local river and because I grew up there I felt comfortable enough sleeping on the ground without a tent. When we first got to the spot I thought I smelled something odd but when I asked my boyfriend he said he didn't smell anything. After walking around a bit the dog wasn't triggered by anything but I did see a giant bird fly off in the distance. Later I realized it must have been a turkey vulture because I kept getting whiffs of something dead. My boyfriend fell asleep pretty immediately but I stayed up a little later reading. I kept getting a really creepy feeling and kept shining my flashlight in the bushes behind us. I finally fell asleep but was woken up pretty soon after to my dog growling. I shined my light in the bushes and sure enough two yellow eyes were staring at us and moving around about 20 feet away. I grabbed the hatchet and woke my boyfriend up. He wasn't too concerned and soon fell back asleep. I of course cannot sleep and keep the hatchet in my hand. I drift off but right before dawn I'm woken up by a noise and see something black running into the bushes. The thing was right next to us and must have been smelling us. My dog was absolutely terrified and shaking but didn't bark at it all. I woke the boyfriend up again and we hiked out. So people, don't ignore the sings, listen to your gut instincts, and bring a braver dog than ours when in the wilderness. I'm a female and I went camping by myself at a popular campsite however it was late in the season. I'm laying there drinking and eating my steak there as a group of college guys a few campsites over who I ended up giving like an opener to and utensils because they didn't have it. I'm pretty experienced camping by myself in situations like this, it was probably just them and me and the entire campground. All of them did the whole concerned about the girl camping alone but and then being big bad guys who can take on anything. All of a sudden I'm sitting there on my log when a couple of guys up here out of the darkness, they old raccoon waddles through my camp I smack my poking stick onto the log to make it amble away. 10 minutes later I hear horrible girly screams coming from their campsite. And all of a sudden my campsite was filled with a bunch of college guys claiming that they have seen some sort of monster. It had glowing eyes. And a mask. They sit down at my fire shaking, but 10 minutes later here comes Mr. Raccoon again and they freaked out yet again. I did not tell them it was a raccoon. I'm wondering if to this day they believe that they were camping alone when a monster walked though. I live out in the country in cornfields with several wooded areas scattered throughout. One night I was riding my four-wheeler and I could see what looked like the glow of a fire deep within the woods. I stopped and watched for about an hour to see if I could see anyone leave. Suddenly the light went out. After about 30 minutes I was worked up enough dumb courage to ride into the woods. I kept seeing reflective light coming from trees all over the woods. When I looked closer in one of these I realized someone had stabbed a bunch of broken mirror shards of glass into the trees, I'm assuming to act as markers at night? Anyways. I continued deeper and came across a ritual style circle with candles in the ground surrounding one big candle and a bunch of geometric shapes made from twine and sticks hanging from the tree, overall a really creepy scene deep in the woods by yourself. Of course in classic horror movie fashion my light on my ATV just turned off. Obviously I freaked the hell out, started my ATV and hauled ass out of there. Halfway on my way out of the woods my light came back on, loose wire connection. And I saw, I think, a person in a black robe off my ATV tracks deeper in the woods. I must have gone 40 miles per hour through the rest of the trails until I was home. Don't know what I witnessed but it scared the absolute shot out of me. I was hiking with my dad in late September on the west coast of Vancouver Island, 
which is usually when bears are fattening up for hibernation and most likely to be aggressive and since we were a couple days walk from either trailhead and medical attention, we were on high alert. It had rained constantly and we had only seen a single other hiker the whole time, he was traveling in the opposite direction as we were, he was heading north we were southbound, and we had camped beside him two nights prior. So for the whole trip the only tracks that we saw that looked remotely fresh were a single set of hiking boots coming towards us left by a pleasant and solitary German tourist and we only saw them in places with extensive overhead cover. All other tracks were washed out and filled with rain water due to the days and days of constant rain that was doing the best it could to fuck up our vacation and, and make our packs even heavier. We were approaching a blackberry patch between ridges that hugged a small creek and smelled what we thought was a particularly stinky bear and since the blackberries were on both sides of the trail with only about 3 meters between them, we had our heads on a swivel. There was no overhanging trees as this particular berry patch was dozens of meters across and 2 or more meters high. My dad told me to hurry through as quick as we could and made a comment about how smart it was that we were wearing bear bells and how dangerous it is to startle a feeding bear. He was a couple meters ahead of me when I looked down and saw a footprint. It looked like an unshoed human footprint, except that it was 2 inches wider and at least 2 inches longer than mine, and I have size 14 feet. It also had dermal ridges and only had a couple raindrops in it, so whatever made it had stepped there literally moments before. The scariest thing about it was that there was no other print so whatever had made that track had stepped out of the eastern side of the berry patch across the trail, 3 meters, and into the western patch in a single step. I was so startled I looked around as much as I could before my dad lovingly told me to hurry the fuck up. And that was the only track there that wasn't now a small puddle, so before you discount it as a double stepping bear paw print, where a bear's back paw steps into the print of its front paw, there is no way a black bear could have crossed the 3 meter distance without leaving more prints, say what you want about bears, they are not at all graceful. There are also no grizzly bears on the island, and a cougar wouldn't have left a print that looked anything like that, even if it stepped in its own track. It also couldn't have been a hoax because a person couldn't just stand in the berry patch with a pole with a footprint on it as they would be interacting with bears on a dangerously consistent basis. Also why would someone sit in a berry patch in the relentless west coast rain in the hopes of pranking people that might not pass by for days? It doesn't really make sense to go to that much effort, risk that much danger and basically swim in a lacerating blackberry bush for multiple days. I didn't believe in Sasquatch before that but now I don't know what to believe. I was a service plumber for years and that smell is still in my top 5 worst smells of all time. And I will never forget the image of the raindrops hitting that fresh track, as I stared in disbelief. As I have been receiving multiple offers from different podcasts I feel compelled to add this caveat. I don't now nor will I ever consent to the publication of my story, and its reproduction or discussion in any form. Please respect my choice to speak with my own voice. I hiked from the bottom to the top of the UK last summer. 12 weeks and 1,300 miles of pure freedom. It's a great country to hike through. Very easy to stick to the sparsely populated countryside. Nothing too creepy for me but I met a 20-something Scottish woman doing the same hike. She had two stories. One night, it was so warm, she just cowboy camped, no tent just in a sleeping bag under the stars, woke up in the middle of the night with some dude just sitting a couple feet from her. Thought you might want some company. She bolted up and just sprinted away without her boots. He disappeared. Second, one day while walking along some livestock fields, she turned around to find a dude, in only boots, keeping pace with her, eye contact and going to town. Again she took off, phoned the local authorities who started a manhunt. Someone had been murdered a couple nights before and the killer was still at large. One of those situations that really brought home how differently women experience the world. Didn't happen to me but to my friend. He went camping with a couple of his cousins in a desert area in northern Saudi Arabia and we have a belief that there are unnatural beings that live in the desert and if you see any sign of them just leave that place because they'll probably harm you if you stay there. When it was night time they set up their tent and went to sleep my friend woke up in the middle of the night hearing strange noises, he said it was people talking but in an unknown language. Then he heard a noise coming from above when he looked he saw footmarks on the top of the tent like someone walking on the top of the tent it took a few steps and then it disappeared he went outside it was a moonlit night and he saw a figure standing behind the car he said it looked human but couldn't make out his face like it was changing as he was looking at him but he was smiling sometimes. He started saying verses from the Quran to maybe make him leave or something but the figure kept standing there looking at him and said you need to leave this place. Then the figure moved like a shadow to the top of a hill near them and kept standing there looking at him he went back in the tent and couldn't sleep until the morning, his cousins woke up he told them they didn't go to that place again. 
I've heard a lot of stories about them and what they do there and I live in a town in the desert of Saudi Arabia and people here have encountered a lot of weird shit. My boyfriend, three of our friends and I decided one night to go explore a field we had enjoyed visiting during the day. It was off a one lane park road, very secluded. Essentially, after crossing over a bridge you turned into a gravel area. There was a gravel path with tall grasses on either side, that at the opposite end of the gravel had a path that went off to the left and right. Our friends went to the left, we went to the right. It was not a windy night, or even a cold one, which is important. We walked about halfway down the path when we started to hear steps. They weren't our friends, because we had three, and they weren't a person, because we had full view of the area all the way to our car. We figured it was an animal in the grass that had stepped over a stick, until the noise continued to consistent rustling and we both thought we heard breathing. We saw three distinct patterns of movement in the tall grass. We don't live in an area where nature kills us, so we figured it was some possums and took off running back down the path to meet our friends. As we came to the center where the paths meet, and we split off, we don't see our friends. We continue walking, figuring we'll find them eventually as we aren't exploring a huge area. We make small talk and then hear laughing. We see three big black shadows about five feet from the entrance of the path at the end of the tall grass. Our friends are big, and dressed in black. We call out to our friends, laughing at each other for getting spooked and start walking a little faster, but then the laughter abruptly stops. The three distinct black shadows remain and are taller than our friends. They don't move, or say anything. In fact, the closer we get to them the bigger they are rather than getting smaller as we get close. We both still see the shadows and not our friends. I've never held a hand so hard in my life, there was nothing anywhere that would create a shadow, let alone multiple distinct ones, in this spot, at night. We were two feet away from it and both saw the black in front of us. We both realized that as we walked through the shadow, and both turned around at the same time after coming out of this shadow to see there was no difference in light once we crossed through it, we ran the rest of the way to the car to find our three friends wide-eyed and out of breath. Help Opal's 9999 open up this damn car. We filed in and it wasn't even on before we all told each other the same story. They thought we were the black shadows standing at the path laughing to freak them out, and they were calling out to us. They heard the laughing, but they weren't laughing. This really bothered our friend group for a while because we weren't on drugs, and we all saw the same thing. Another important note is, once we split, we didn't see each other until we were all back at the car. The grass was below chest high, and while it was dark, it wasn't pitch black to the point we wouldn't have been able to see each other especially in the center path on the way back to the car. Both groups were calling out to the other group. Point being, in theory, we should have seen or heard each other running and calling out, but we didn't. In the forest behind where my grandparents live, upper Midwestern state, about 250 uninterrupted acres, no other houses, my brother and I always used to go hiking on the hills beside the river that runs through the property. At the top of the largest hill overlooking the river, there are about three dozen humps in the grass slash tree covered earth. On one of our hikes, we reached the top of that hill and began to feel very strange, and inexplicably mournful. Then, we heard what sounded like a baby crying directly behind us, but there was nothing there when we turned around. We ran as fast as we could down the hill and did not stop until we got back to my grandparents' house, about one miles away. We've never been back to that spot. I was a young buck, 15 years old, camping with my buddies in a local state park on an island in the middle of a lake. We were sitting around the campfire eating soup out of a can talking about local ghost stories and urban legends. We decided to hop back in the canoes and head over to Main Side where the majority of the park and the campsites were to explore around. We pull the canoes up on a sandy beach, get out and begin to head up the hill on a trail. We're all spooked out and on edge and we see this bright bouncing light coming down the hillside we all proceed to freak out and assume the worst. I was the first one down as I was young and athletic at the time and somehow managed to jump roughly 8 feet from the bank into the canoe, miraculously land in the rear seat and get ready to push off while my buddies get in. We finally get situated and push off and we see it's only hikers coming down the trail. I was never so scared in my life and adrenaline is very real lol. Nothing paranormal but an interesting experience nonetheless. A lighthearted tale follows. July of this year, I went for a few weeks hiking the Appalachian Trail from Delaware Water Gap to, whenever I got off. Anyways, first night on the trail I made it a good 15 miles about to the Crater Lake Trailhead. Seeing that there was water nearby, I decided that was good enough and proceeded to stealth camp, setting up a tent in a non-designated area, right off the trail. What I didn't know is that this trailhead gets a lot of trash. I mean, a lot of trash due to the frequent day hikers slash visitors that park at the trailhead and don't follow LNT, leave no trace. As such, 
There's a mama bear and cub that frequent this area at night. Sure enough, before the sun is fully set, the cub is only 10 feet away nosing about in my direction. I shoo it off and hear another hiker that was stealthing a few dozen feet away shoo the mother, by the looks of it, she was much bigger. We're at this for over an hour, shooing them every 15 minutes. Now, it's not like I'm scared of black bear, I've hiked this section frequently before and NJ just has a lot of bear. I've had them come right up to me in the shelters at night and literally sniff me in my bag before I spook them away. They're mostly large raccoons. However, tonight being my first night on the trail, I have a bag full of moist delicious brownies mixed with cookie dough. My own human nose could smell it, to the bears it must have been like rolling around on a bakery floor. I do my bear hang and set to sleep, waking up a few times in the night to bang on the side of my tent and chew the bears again because I hear them nosing about under my hang. In the morning, I wake up, walk to my hang and see it still intact, they weren't able to get to it. However, I almost stepped in the answer to the age-old question, as they seemed at least pissed off they couldn't get to my delicious treats and decided, right under the bear hang, to leave me a token of their displeasure. Walker Lake in Nevada. Just finished driving 14 hours and stopped at a county campground. There's no trees, and it's very windy so they provide these curved sheet metal shelters that look like a design from the Fallout series. 50 plus sites and we were the only campers. My wife and I sleep in a rooftop tent, which is like a clam fish house. It requires a short ladder to support the side hanging off the vehicle, and for you to climb in. We turned in for the night and around 1am a cop drives through the campground and shines his lights on us for a few minutes before driving off. Wife falls back asleep, but I couldn't so I start playing on my phone. An hour passes and I hear footsteps walking on the gravel path in the distance walking towards us and they stop near our site. I froze with fear and kept still. The footsteps started again but I could hear them pass through the small brush in our site making circles around us. After a few passes I slowly rustled my cig out of its holster and assure myself it's an animal. A few more passes and then I hear our door handle being pulled on our car. Now my heart started pumping so hard I could hear my blood pressure. I heard movement move through the brush to other side of our car towards our ladder and felt the vibration off someone putting their weight on the bottom rung. Panicking, I managed to clumsily chamber around and pointed it at the tent door. After a minute of being frozen in time the tent shook like someone jumped off the ladder. I heard footsteps on the gravel path again, this time walking away from us. My wife is a heavy sleeper and didn't stir. I chose to let her sleep and stayed awake clutching my handgun until sunrise. If I were to guess I bet it was a desperate homeless person living nearby. First solo backpacking trip I did a three-day loop in Aspen, Colorado. On the second day I way overdid it doing two passes and more mileage than I planned and I was absolutely exhausted. Ended up finally setting up for camp when I had reached the point of actually getting sick from what I now imagine was some sort of heat exhaustion or something. When I finally made it to bed it was more of passing out than anything else. So at the time I had a hammock set up for sleeping so I'm a few feet off the ground. I end up having what seemed like a crazy dream about waking up to something at camp sniffing around. When I woke up I found out it either wasn't a dream or it was a crazy coincidence, as I had relatively fresh scat and markings from a mountain lion around my little camp. This is 10 plus miles into the back country so of course I assume the entire next day I'm being stalked by a mountain lion, hear things all day from my paranoid brain convincing me. Then a few weeks later I see a news story about a mountain lion killed for being seen in that exact area way too many times getting too comfortable with people. Made me think twice for a while about backpacking alone. Was camping with three other mates near Harpesport on a friend's farm, not like a moo moo friendly farm but more open untamed land with lots of wildlife in South Africa a few years ago and this was nothing new to us as we did it often and had a good knowledge of the area and its wildlife. We were aware there were baboons in the area so two of us would stay awake and keep a fire going whilst the other two slept and we would swap, as we had killed and cooked some chickens that day we were worried the baboons would come investigate and just be an event we would rather avoid due to how aggressive they get. Round about 2 am we heard the terrifying roar of a troop of baboons and they sounded so close, maybe 200 meters. Even though we knew it was the baboons they sound of it is bone chilling and anyone who has heard it will know. Anyway the next day was our last and we went back to the main house about 2 kilometers away and told our mates about this so they decided to check their game cameras they had in certain spots nearby we were to see if we could catch them on camera and see if they were fighting. This is the part where I got some chills, one of the cameras picked up motion about 300 meters from where we were, turns out there was a leopard, of which we knew of beforehand but we were told it was on the other end of his farm, and it was seen heading towards us but we never even knew. The thought at going out for a piss and there could be a leopard in the tree above is bone chilling. 
Not too exciting but the only story I have that I can relate to on this. Oh my goodness I have way too many. Okay one of my top ones was when myself and my other friend were hiking down a trail we were fairly familiar with and then ended up getting extremely lost. The sun had almost set so we were getting ready to pull out flashlights and start running when we come across a man just wandering around. He seemed pretty harmless like he was just hiking the trail too so we asked him where the parking lot is and was very friendly and told us which way to go. It was only then that we realized we are both bundled up from the cold transitioning fall winter weather and this dude was in a t-shirt slash shorts with no shoes at all and was just beginning to hike up the mountain, which was a good 3 mile hike to the top. Right as the sun set. I don't know why but that always unsettled me, what was he doing, did he live up in the mountains, or does he just hide there? We never saw him again. The next was when I went camping on top of some mountains and it was a group of us. Myself and my boyfriend at the time split from the group and decided to take a night hike through the dark forest. Let me tell you, at night, when the trees are blocking every moon and star, the darkness almost consumes you. We began to get a feeling like we were being watched, to the point where it was almost suffocating and we both decided to head back to camp. The next day when we got home we decided to look up the area where we camped, apparently we were not the only ones who felt this way when camping there, there were many stories of people saying they felt like they had been being watched. We searched further to find out there was a cemetery very very close to the camp spot. What's even creepier was the cemetery was close to a spot called rape road apostrophe dot 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 not the greatest combination, always left me feeling. Strange. I think we went back there one more time to camp before we decided to explore other places. I have more if you guys want more. I can probably think of way creepier times because I basically grew up in a cabin in the woods so hiking slash camping slash exploring the forest are some of my favorite things that I have done. Not my story but it's still a good one nonetheless. My family knew this guy back in the day, probably around the mid 80s who would go into the backwoods every summer to collect wood to sell. How long he stayed up there depended on the year but it was usually one to two months. He would always say that at night the forest can make really strange sounds, but after spending so much time alone in the woods you get to know things pretty well. Occasionally he would hear a noise that he couldn't recognize and that would make him perk up for a while but nothing too out of the ordinary. Well on one site in particular he had been working and decided to take a break, he lodged his axe into the trunk of a tree he just downed and went to go do other things. He comes back and his axe is in a different place than he left it in the tree. The chop where he planted it was visible right where the axe should have been, but it was now sitting planted at the opposite end. Little things like this happen frequently enough that he decided to leave early because he figured someone must have been up there. They never did anything too big, just move things around for the most part but that's still enough to freak you out. When hiking with a buddy in an area we had never walked in. Found trail we intended to follow blocked. No worries, we walked down the road and got on a different path, kind of a remote area. Wet weather, no one else around. Path peters out. Not what the map says. Also half a dozen abandoned vehicles we have to squeeze past. Okay. We push past the vehicles and continue on, it's not really a path now but we can see around us some features we can see on the physical map plus our GPS is telling us we are where we think we are so we say it and push on. Next is a huge pile of abandoned children's toys. Rocking horse, dolls, toy cars. We pass a couple of completely overgrown houses that are more like expanded caravans tracked onto livestock buildings. All half covered by trees, grass and weeds. Windows however seem maintained, no graffiti. Given how remote it all is it feels like no one ever comes here. It is strange. We push on. We hit woodland so thick we have to break branches and climb through and under all the vegetation. We can see on the map it is supposed to be woods for about a kilometer. Halfway through we stumble into two massive polytunnels and another pile of children's toys. All hidden and away from paths. Rough tractor tracks show something goes through these woods sometimes and a thin foot trail leads off in the right direction for us to get out. We hustle out and escape the mysterious definitely not a weed grow run by serial killers. The sound of drums. Was camping with my husband, my two children, and some friends. We were way up north of the Skokomish Indian Reservation in the Olympic National Forest, western Washington state, at the end of a logging road in the middle of absolute nowhere. We were so far in that the silence was deafening, and so high up that you could only see the tops of the pine trees from the road that we drove in on. Late on the second night we heard the drums. The type of rhythm that you might hear at a powwow. We were probably 15 miles from the reservation, and it might have been people just having a good time, camping elsewhere, but it was so eerie to hear. My husband said it was probably the stick Indians, the guardians of the forest. 
He said that he used to hear them all the time up in the Olympics and around Shelton slash Lake Cushman slash Hama Hama when he would go camping with his dog. He and I used to drive around the logging roads at night, deer spotting. He had been a logger slash log truck driver so he knew those roads like the back of his hand. We heard those drums more than once, and it still makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up when I think about it. When I was a kid I would hike all over the local woods, hours a day, sometimes all day. Nothing really fucked up happened, except once. I was hiking along and I found a huge, open patch of sandstone and shale. This was huge, two football fields big. I kind of wandered along it and explored it, finding nothing of note except, you know, lots of rocks. It didn't look dug up or anything, but like exposed rock on a hill. The next week I was telling a friend about it, and sort of described how to get there. He looked skeptical and said there's nothing like that, there and I told him he was wrong, that I'd seen it. So we elect to go there. Now, this is no more than two or three miles from where I was living, and the path I took was dictated entirely by terrain. What I mean to say is, it'd be hard to get lost or take a wrong turn. But it wasn't there. In fact, nothing even like it was there. The path to get to it was there, the route I took was the same, but here I stood on where this rock area should have been but there was nothing. My friend, obviously, told me I was a fucking idiot and that my time as a boy scout had been ill spent. I spent the rest of the summer looking for that rock area and never found it. Later on when satellite imagery became available, I looked on that and never found it, and believe me I looked. So, the frightening scenario I have concluded must have occurred is this, I am misremembering what I saw. My brain itself is at fault. If it can lie to me about that field of rocks, which I could probably draw you a picture of today, 26 years later, what else is it lying to me about? This happened to one of my hunting buddies. Hunting on a remote piece of public hunting land on the side of a mountain. They had all split up to do a deer drive. As they were walking, they noticed a clearing in the woods, which is pretty common. However, they all immediately noticed the smell of animal decay. As they approached the field, they noticed things hanging from trees and turned out to be the skins of various animals, hanging around the clearing from trees and the carcasses of said animals and directly in the middle was the base of a tree with a large heart sitting there. Everyone got out of there as quickly as they could. When I first heard about it, I thought it was made up until all of them told the same story and refused to bring it up again because the trauma they experienced. I was hiking with my girl and a friend's pit bull in the late afternoon in winter. It was a small mountain in New England which I'd hiked recently before. We saw some amazing ice sculptures near some cliffs that had formed from melting and refreezing. One looked a lot like a bird and had some sort of spiritual energy to it, so I thought. I took a photo of it even though my mind told me not to. Later, we lost the trail. It made no sense, I recognized exactly where I was, except the trail simply didn't continue like it had only weeks before. It was getting dark, so we decided to turn back. On our way back, we heard coyotes howling in the distance. Getting closer. Then, we realized there were two separate packs on either side of us. Like they had split up to hunt something down. The dog was getting very upset. We got to the bottom, and the howling was still getting closer. We literally stood back to back with the dog out in guard mode, rocks in hand, for half an hour until our ride came to pick us up, agreed on time, no cell service. Coyotes don't usually attack people, but this was just very creepy nonetheless. At the very least, I was worried that the pit bull would attack and get hurt. 